This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and to help run your business. If I eat you, it's because I want to eat you. Is that okay with you, Louis? As long as it ends this, then do whatever you see fit. Just f already! Welcome all to the glorious return that is B-Star Season 2. The season where men love men and my queen Haru gets screwed out of the story. We'll get to that though. For everyone who needs a quick refresher on what happened last season, go watch my summary of season one. Oh, who am I kidding? Y'all are too lazy for that. So let me just give you the basics. East Stars is Animal Crossing, but hungry and hornier. The anthropomorphic animals live in constant fear of each other, divide between herbivores who spend their every waking moment around animals that can and want to eat them, while the carnivores are constantly fighting the urge to do so, while also resenting everyone else for daring to call them out on it. Omnivores also exist, but shh. We don't want to talk about them because they'd hurt their metaphor. After a drama kid got murdered for tasting like Popeyes, the school went on high alert while everyone is convinced everyone else is racist, even as they themselves are being racist. Bringing us to our main character, Autistic Headcanon Legoshi, a giant gray wolf who accidentally assaulted a play buddy, awakening powerful urges. I'm growing bigger. Can you see? I won't look. Go away. I know you're ready. The fun part is just starting. And after unlocking several more kinks, he saved the Giga Chad Haru from a gang of lions. There's also a deer named Louie who... Legoshi, bite me! He's a power bottom with issues, who we last see in the middle of a gang <laughs> that we don't see the end of. Meanwhile, Haru is questioning all her life choices as she gets ready to bang a wolf, who thinks he's only made to Facebook friends. And that's where the series left off, with the grisly murder that starred the series still unsolved. And this is the season that will answer all your questions. Like what happened to the deer? Who's the killer? Why is Legoshi's door out of the closet a revolving one? All this and more will be answered here. But first, a word from my sponsors. A special service announcement. See, a lot of people have been getting black for having sponsors. Which I get, it's a totally valid opinion to hate people who don't want to be poor. But when I do it, I can always say with confidence that it's a product worth using. And today, that product is Squarespace. See, building a website is a nightmare, and learning how to build one is honestly not worth the time. Which is why Squarespace exists. Squarespace was created to allow anyone to build and customize their own websites. Whether it's for business or pleasure, there's a template for you. Whether it's adding videos from YouTube or editing the built-in mobile design, Squarespace gives you complete control over your website. Click the link down below in the description and try out Squarespace for free for 14 days and get 10% off your first purchase. It's a site to build other websites. Like I started using this in college and I've never needed anything since. So trust me when I say that it's worth it. Thank you all for listening to me get that bread. Now, let's talk about the furry show. Fuck! It's recap. During a hard night out with middle school boys, Jack aka Mr. Peanut Butter sees the Chamber of Secrets slithering behind a door. Freaking out, Lego Man doesn't care since he's just figured out that sexting is an option. But that's a little much for the poor wolf to handle as he's a pure boy who thinks second base is hand holding. His love Haru, appreciate her while you can, because she won't be in this season much. Best girl is getting slut shamed for being the only girl with hoes, but her newest toy Lego she gave her haters even more stuff to howl about. She doesn't give a fuck though, because their lack of self-esteem isn't her problem. But lacking in self-esteem is all of Legoshi's as he thinks he's shing the bed for no reason. And whatever that noise is. A very much not Barry Louie is back accompanied by the softest you want a piece of this jazz. Yes, it's been a while, Legoshi. After two months of ghosting everyone, he's back to tell them he saw their texts he just doesn't care. Dropping out of school, but even after leaving the drama club, he is still the biggest drama queen. And this is all just him being extra about Legoshi's sudden popularity. Juno also exists. Moving on. I made this one with my tears. Okay, fine. 
This is Juno. She exists because the plot occasionally needs her, and she's written out all the rest of the time. Her only defining character traits are being a segregationist, predator pride, and keeping the races pure with plans to bury the phone with Lego She. Sadly for her, she's not his type, which is male, antlered, and can rock a suit. Wolfboy finally comes back in the story to be relieved that he doesn't have tinnitus. It's just the basilisk. 3 out of 10, not enough Aru. Lots of talking. All right, more backstory. So in this world, there's something called a beast star. It's a position that everyone in the show aspires to. It is meaningless and it has no real value. Think celebrity. This is also a bit of a spoiler, but it will help you all in the long run. The beast star title doesn't even matter because there's actually a super beast star who makes all the real decisions, with the current one basically being the punisher who's pissed he lost his boyfriend to an airheaded wolf. Every school with money nominates a beast star, and I add that money bit because you know they don't let poor people have a voice, but this year, Everyone is pissed that Legoshi School keeps refusing to nominate anyone. They don't because all their options are either too horny, too gay, or both. Killing two birds with one stone probably isn't a PC statement in this universe. The other principles aside, whoever solves the Kentucky Fried Murder gets to be the next beast star. And this works out because then they don't have to pay anyone to solve it. Back in the dorm laundromat, the school guard is checking out the students, calling them out for a whole season's worth of weird shit. Average Tuesday for this school. The security guard calls the student to do her job for her, loving the attention Legoshi accepts because he's an idiot. Stalking an old friend of the victims, his friend tells him the obvious and just to use their mutual to talk to the main guy, who after realizing that maybe pissing off the wolf isn't the best idea in this current political climate, just gives him a diary. Then because there wasn't enough action this episode, Legoshi stops Hugh Jackman's panty raid. Though back to that diary, which is just them gushing about how cool it is to have a carnivore friend. Well that was dry reading, so they decide to sex things up again. But worry no more. These cats have a new boss that'll whip them into shape. On the table and off the menu, Louis is now leading the line Yakuza by virtue of sex appeal. He's hit his rebellious phase and he's playing by his own rules, which rule number one, always look pretty. Is this series written to be one part thought experiment and the rest of it is just slutty men being hot for no goddamn reason. The world's worst Among Us player. On the case, Legoshi is suspicious of all his drama friends. He's not sure who could have killed them, Tony, but he can't be sure. Being a long game of psychological warfare to find out who the killer is. Hungry. Huh? That failed, so he just tells everyone he's looking into it before devolving into a fight between the virgin wolf and the friend no one likes. Then because Louie's gone, the replacement pretty boy steps in. Wow, am I interrupting something? This is Pina. Kalata. If you think the male gaze on Louis was bad, it's about to get a lot worse and this guy is not helping. Sauntering away, everyone can only be confused and a little aroused as they watch the rear end all their women will be chasing. Back to the murderer. Who could it have been? Could it have been the too obvious tiger? Maybe the bird who looks very dumb. Maybe it was either the two short guys who barely have any lines. Or maybe, just maybe, it's the giant ass bear. Flashback to the night Louie decided the girl wasn't worth dying for. The lion Yakuza find him knee deep in their boss's blood and where they come to the decision that maybe a food fetishist wasn't the best look for them. Applying a fur of action, the cover up for their saggy image, they name Louie as their leader. This is all thanks to daddy lion Ibuki. Then to show them who's boss, Louie puts all their meat in his mouth. This wins their respect and the lion side keep the deer around to see if they can get him to do it again. Pina gets introduced to everyone else. They are lusting. So is he. Hang on, what? I'm just like a normal animal. I, mean, I work backstage. You seem far too reserved to have suffered this kind of injury. Which that might be a new record for Legoshi. Me up with his club friends, he wants to be serious. But they just want to hear about all the sex he isn't having. They do give him one good piece of advice saying that, bro, you just might be obsessed with this chick. You might want to take a step back and reevaluate yourself. Like she deserves to be put on a pedestal, but you might be going into this a little too fast. But later that night, she tries to make a man out of the wolf. But like always, Legoshi's biggest enemy is Legoshi. You still have feelings for Louis. Why the fuck I'd... would you do that? So, for the record, Legoshi blew his first kiss by bringing up another man after self-doubting himself into thinking he's not in love with her. Bro, you should be crying. And the idiot's about to get jumped. 
New kinks all around. After thoroughly cock-blocking himself out of a healthy relationship, Wolf Porn gets knocked out, blindfolded, and punished. I don't know how Legoshi's gonna make this all his fault, but he'll find a way. Getting his shit kicked in and unable to remember his attacker, thanks to the very convenient cold. Out of options, Lego decides, oh, it's just to solve a murder, and shoves his whole tongue into the attacker's mouth. Give it to me. Give it to me. Your saliva. Getting his first kiss and making things so awkward, the killer decides to leave. Being bloody and being untied by a very supportive Jack, who doesn't deserve this, a lot just happened. And Legoshi has to ask himself, what would Louie do? So he abandons everyone, returning to Panda Man Going, who was basically his master in the last season, who agrees to train him some more on the condition that A, he doesn't ruin his life, and B, goes back to school. Also C, he has to sit in the murder chair. And because we love random scene changes, now we're at a strip club with a very awkward strip tease. In Erevor, Neela gets eaten because of what zoologists would describe as a dick move. Thankfully, the defender of women Louis is here with his squad. There's a lot of musing, I call this wiki filler, but it's the meat of the story and it's good stuff. Back at dinner, Louis can't take all of this meat, so his lion daddy gives him a break and buys him a salad, which the deer takes as being seen as weak, when really this is about him not dying. Then Juno shows up. Hurry up and let me see him! Okay, but why? You're shitting me. Of reactions all around. Desperate for relevance, Juno is walking home with Louie, who wants him to come back to school. Not because she likes him, but she just hopes that he'll drag the bunny away from the wolf. Which is an idiotic plan, because Haru can actually keep a man. This is not a date though. Like, for real, I've read the manga, and I'm still confused why they even bother trying to pair these two up. It's barely relevant for Louis' character, and Juno doesn't have one to benefit. They could have done anything with this, yet it amounts to a whole lot of no homo. Dragging the story back to the recently massacred wolf, no one has the heart to tell him it sucks, except a simp, she loves it. Doing it for the Alpine Legoshi is splitting his time between being at school, spending nights torturing himself, all in the name of training, of course, in dealing with the man Horpina, who can't keep his girl straight. So, needing a break, he decides for some aggressive male bonding. I just want to kiss her. So, as we are now, do you want to me? Major buy energy, but it might just be the eyes. Back with the first man to put his finger in the wolf's mouth, Louis is trying to get his dear father to sign his permission slip, but the sugar daddy ain't having none of his son's drama. I'm not asking. They're in public and they don't care. One week later, Louis is still holding that gun and having a pity party about returning to where he belongs. Allow me to translate. I'm trash, someone please fix me. Calling his son's bluff, he lets him off with a temporary leave of absence, figuring it's better to let him run wild now than let him be depressed in that arranged marriage he's stuck with. Celebrating his freedom with drinks and strippers, who tells him about the sorry state of leaf eaters in the black market. Everything else is wiki filler. Then. The king of idiots makes Juno do something he could have just used the internet for, checking out her mouth in public, and he kind of awakens something in her. That does it. I surrender, Legoshi. Do with me what you will. I'm completely yours. Then he just leaves. And you know what? She deserves better than him. Also, we've gone four episodes about the main girl, and the withdrawal is killing me. Listen, one of my guy friends invited me to go out with him tonight. Go on. Oh, thank Katra. Over dealing with a flippin' wolf, she's come to grab him by the collar and bring him in line. But if you cut out all his save the world yes, she just wants him to pay for dinner and to not ghost her. I think we should get married instead. Legosh, my man, my wolf. Back the fuck up here, and stop trying to make decisions the bunny has made for you. Walking away to brush off her stable of side hose, she's just struggling with what to do with this idiot, which is probably the reason they're together. Down at the club, Tony reveals that putting things in their mouth is just a norm for this school, with a game of tug war making Legoshi realize he's been neglecting Jaw Day. It's probably from the lack of deer he hasn't been chowing down on. Who done it? Fresh off the jowl issues, Legoshi is being a freak in the boys' locker room, well, more of a freak, tasting their saliva to compare it to the inside of his victim's mouth, finding a crushed water bottle, which can only have one answer. This has to be a message to me. I'm the one who ate Tem. Investigate any further, and that's your neck. 
returning to class to avoid eye contact because, let's be honest, that's a weird thing he did back there. The class finds other things a shame when they catch the anteater giving the local jaguar a handy, and we learn from Wookie Brain Legosh that herbivores getting disarmed, it actually isn't too uncommon. So they have a pretty good shot just reattaching it. Small comfort though for a guy who is bleeding on the floor. Can't get the disco as no one wants to look too eager to pick up the crying ball of meat, but Lego's nice guy reputation finally gets him something when he is the only carnivore Ant Weeper will let touch him. The only other guy to barely sweat in the situation grabs the arm, and they make it just in time. And we finally get a chance to catch our breath. On another note, I know it was you, Riz. You're a Thames killer. Well, we're just doing this now? Here? Really? Okay. This is Riz, that one guy's killer who ate him without sides, who has spent the last two seasons being hit in the background not saying much, even though if you look at the shadows, it's kind of obvious. Though the manga is somehow worse with the really obvious bear mouth. Riz is the best villain in Beastars, and I can only say that because fuck the next guy. Great design, but he is overused with a very weak conclusion. The man is basically Draco and Hot Pants syndrome on crack. But enough about how mid the next season's going to be. We're talking about Lego and how out of his weight class he is. The only thing to do is make sure that you stay silent too. What do you say? This boy roids. Fighting in the middle of the day, at school, right outside the nurse's office with people in it, is just too much idiocy for Pina to bear. Strutting through the public tag, he makes them, sits them down for a chat, where he uses normal people logic to explain how screwed Riz is. Just hypothetically. In a club of 33 people, three of them end up dead. How long does it take the police to start investigating the remaining 30, leaving to not call the cops? and for Riz to have a panic attack. Elsewhere, the racist animals are all horrified to find out next semester, classes will be segregated. A separate and equal will solve all of these murders. Tony the Not Bill Tiger is called out for being a massive meat-eating hoe, and the drama club is trying to stay together. Because, while Smokey the Murder Bear can't sleep. With all the guilt, meat, and drugs running through his system. Yes, this is actually interesting. All bears over 6'6 are medicated with, with muscle deteriorating drugs to keep them thin and non-threatening for everyone else's sake. And this happens because the government says so. And drugs are way easier to prescribe in mass and therapy. And then we flash back to how Riz met them. And yes, there was subtext. Not sure why, but it's like my body suddenly feels so light. Or just text. Riz would tell them about his forced medication, then would caress his thigh, and tell Pooh Bear how scary he is. Tim was the only person who knew who the real Riz was. Falling in love and thinking that the drugs are holding him back, the bear stops taking them. Cold turkey, causing him to get jacked and get a handy from Tim, and then everyone panicked. The delusional Riz eats them, thinking that they wanted it and that they just had the bestest friendship ever. Yeah, this is why you don't just stop taking your meds all at once, folks. They're not cigarettes. Going cold turkey can and will fuck you up. I did this, so I can tell you with experience that it fucks with your head and could lead you to eating a guy. Just always talk to your doctor, be safe. The Nothing Episode. Time for another world building vignette. The young dominatrix hates the idea that she's being used for insta clout because diversity sells, no shit. Still can't get in most films though. Thankfully for this situation, the little, I'm just gonna assume sheep, is just a shutter bug and they start taking photos for their own personal collections. Leaving Complex to go back to the main story where sidekick Lego Sheep is learning from Bamboo Batman how to be stronger by fighting the mentally ill and homeless, like Batman. All in the arms, Lego realizes he traded jaw strength for plus two to his limbs. This will be pointless later, but good for him for trying. But at the recently segregated school, Juno, the pretty wolf that she is, doesn't understand why everyone can't see that this is all a good thing, how this is all for their own good. Because we needed one character to have this viewpoint, and Juno wasn't doing anything at the time. Except now she's with Haru, who must be exhausted with all the wolves she's been pulling. While back at the black market, Louie is hanging out with his pride parade, watching an old goat cut a croc's dick off. In summary, society sucks and screws everyone over. And Lion Daddy wants to protect his dear son. Also, the idiot ignored Haru's calls. Stop. Lying. All right, for anyone who thought that I've been playing up or exaggerating the Louis X Legoshi ship, watch this. And even now, one of the easiest scents to recall 
There's Louis. This ain't subtext, people. Legoshi's favorite scent is Louis 17. Scared to fight the Terminator, Goin tells him to just find a friend. Wait, what was that? Okay, no, 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 no. I like shipping these two as much as the next degenerate, but Lego, my man. Are you high? Louis never did jack shit for you besides that Tony situation. Season one, your relationship is Louis verbally abusing himself through you. You stared longingly, rinse and repeat, till you got angry that he was banging your crush. Don't try and twist this into, they were these super cops that did everything together, or ever coordinated on anything, just because now it's convenient for the story. Also, Going Going tells Lego, snitches get stitches, and that's why he shouldn't call the cops on Riz. Though, instead he lies and says, that this is that cliche of learning through your fist, communicating through fighting BS you see time and time again to justify all the violence. We get a touching scene of town handjob where he learns that if you hurt someone by mistake, it doesn't make you a monster unless you don't learn from it. In the black market, the boys found each other in a back alley again. Am I dreaming? Is Louis really? Finally taking him to that dinner, we get lots of tension, lots of telling about how great friends they are, and lots of yaoi moments. Let's run away from here. Right now. Just you and me. Gay! Big Boy is worried about the lions corrupting him, when really, Louis is seducing them, giving him the boot. Lego gets one last hug in before dipping, and the soap opera that are these two is finally over. Now Lego can focus on his new partner, Riz. With Riz having a way better poker face than him, as he ironically monologues about justice, causing the other pretty boy to step in again. With the final twist being, Riz is really just jealous of the hound dog hanging out with Pina. Yep, another love triangle. The Bear Necessities Yogi Bear is indulging in cooking while fighting off the extreme guilt gnawing at his soul. He also can't taste anything now, so boo-hoo for the teen murderer. In class, the other school deviant is having his fantasy made real by a screen-starved rabbit who is this close to opening up Growler again, with the small talk not cutting it. Then of course, cue the melodrama. The more I fall in love with you, the more I worry about... Louis. Why the fuck I'd would you do that? But this ends like it always does, with bold declarations that belong in the author's dad's manga. Like, honestly, every time the show brings up getting stronger or training, scenes just stop being interesting. Back with the man whore, who after a few months still can't remember who he's dating, so the other team knocks on his door. Making things about him again, the bear kindly asks the future hero to stop seeing the wolf to let Riz fulfill his needs. <laughs> Then leaves a twink wiped down the floor of the men's bathroom. To get back at him, Pina gives a grand speech on stage that he won't go down quietly, making it Riz's time to make things, and I can't believe I'm saying this, even gayer. Fresh off daring a bear to eat his ass, Pina tells the tag-along hero about his DM, tricking the idiot into a fight that he immediately takes his shirt off for, with Riz dragging Wolfie to go find some soap. And I think... This just has to be said, Legoshi has a queen weighing the wing for him, but instead, he's ignoring her to get pounded by naked men in the shower. I'm not saying he's making the wrong choice, but this is definitely more his speed. Touching Titty with the self-hating bear, the dialogue just starts making all the double entendre for me. Just try to take a bite out of me. Nearly getting caught, the boys decide to move this meat cue for the new year. Very little happens, but they thoroughly discuss it. Bucketless Lego is eating bugs to get high for the first time in his life. It's a bad trip. Choosing to devour me, you have denied me the chance to experience life beyond the larval stage. The vegan has to have himself a good cry about what a monster he is after eating a moth, with even his mentor feeling embarrassed for him. But he got his original look back, so thank god. Riz, in the meanwhile, is off his meds again. Massive warning signs. Louis finally runs into a bigger queen than him. Please don't make this into a scene. Louis, darling. What do I even say to this? Lion Daddy thinks his son needs higher standards. And it's certainly not my place to pry into his personal life. 
but that is one unattractive woman. But when Louis hears about how the top is treating his ex, he pretends not to care and refuses to watch. Trying not to hit that, Pina gets caught recording Riz, who abducts him. To be his damsel for the big fight, rushed epiphany, Louis decides after years of all the projection and denial, he has a thing for carnivores. He can't live with them, but he definitely wants to be inside them. Abandoning his lion bros to go help his idiot, we get to close out on Lion Daddy talking about the struggles of everyone assuming you're a badass. Also, Riz ate pina colada. Honestly, it probably wasn't worth it. To open the final episode, we get the ending, which is just Lion Daddy admiring how beautiful his dear son is. He's had him for only three months, but Louis already means the world to him. He's elusive, prickly, fragile. Then he gets capped. Don't worry. He's dead. But it was all his plan to let another lion shoot him to let Louis live. Because this was the only way he could leave the gang. Now, in other news, Lego Sheev has already figured out that Pina isn't in fact inside of Riz, so they start fighting. With the big moral argument between them being that of friendship. What should friendship be between prey and predators? Riz thinks eating your friends is the ideal mode of friendship, because his strength has always isolated him and that was the only time he ever felt validated. But Lego Shi wants to live with them because he wants to fuck them. More drug trips that don't amount to anything, with the bear going too hard too fast, at least he admits that what he did was murder. All the sexy posing isn't helping. Taking a break to recharge, Riz talks about how validated he felt by Tem's racism. To be told that he is the monster society and drugs set him up to be, and he isn't just a cute face. But enough hand-holding, back to violence. <laughs> I can't believe you started without me. Which in this case is Louis's outfit. Lego's ex is here to save him from his new abusive relationship. Legoshi's ex is here to save him from the new abusive relationship he stumbled into. Then after all this talk about how eating people is bad, to be stronger through alternative means, Louis finally gets his wish come true when Legoshi bites him. But he wanted it, which Legoshi is just happy his friend is finally being vulnerable around him, and he accepts. I want you to me. Me and find the strength to fight. Activating super wolf mode, they start round four or five. But all doesn't matter though, because Riz realizes that Louie and Lego are relationship goals and gives up. And then everyone apologizes to Riz for not recognizing how horny and lonely he was, and how hard that must have been for him. Thankfully, the cops show up to lock his ass up forever, because Pina is the only one who thinks about protection. And like that, all's well that ends well. Riz is locked up with conjugal visits from Pina, not making that up. Louis got all the credit, and he only got crippled for life. And while Legoshi, our hero, got put on a predator list and kicked out of high school. But Haro's here, so happy endings for everyone! Thank you all for watching, so happy to finally share my thoughts with all of you on the masterpiece that was Beastars Season 2. Overall, Better than season one, though the dub isn't as iconic as Hey bitches and bros and non-binary hoes Which, yeah, check out my skate video It's B-Stars on skateboards, you'll love it This was a super fun video to make, so I hope y'all enjoyed it Subscribe for once in your life, and like the video not because you want to Because much like Louie, I like to be validated Comment about what you thought about Riz and who was your favorite new character And remember, thank y'all for watching, peace out